Hello. So the kind folks at BIOS IT and Supermicro have given me access to a machine with eight of AMD's top of the line MI300X GPUs in it. It's quite exciting because it's kind of the first real hint we're going to get at whether we're going to be able to have them as an alternative to NVIDIA in some of our future services. Um, so we've got remote access to the machine. Um, Supermicro very kindly put Armour Linux on it for us. So if we look in, uh, etc., Red Hat release, we're running on Armour Linux 9.4. Um, so I can definitely confirm that this works with the AMD GPUs. Um, if we run something like Rockham SMI, you get a uh, something. So this is a tool similar to NVIDIA SMI. Um, you can actually get some nice information out of it. You can look at the options. Fairly hideous, but you can see there it has eight accelerators. Um, um, I think I've got one which will ping out some nice information to history. Ah, uh, yes, this is, I seem to recall this is more helpful. Um, so Rockham product. So that gives us a lot of information, but you can see we're running MI300X um, in OAM sockets. There are eight of them, as we'll see later. Um, so we've got this new accelerator. Um, how easy is it to use? Well, for HPC stuff, there's a whole bunch of tools based around Rockham. Rockham is sort of um, AMD's equivalent of CUDA with some extra bits. There's, uh, there's generally, you can replace the N with an R. So where NVIDIA have Nickel NCCL for um, communicating between GPUs, the Rockham version is called Rickle. Um, there's still a lot of work, I think, on the compiler side to be done for like HPC workloads. Uh, but what I really wanted to look at this for because what we're interested in at the moment in building is AI services. So we wanted to look at how easy is it to get code you had running on a NVIDIA GPU and then run it on an AMD GPU. Um, so a good platform for that as an example, and AMD has put a lot of work into this. So a good platform to look at that on is something like PyTorch. Um, a lot of stuff is in PyTorch. If you have been playing around with diffusion models with the diffusers library or uh, LLMs with the transformers library, um, they are based on Torch. Um, so it's a good sort of starting point to see how hard it is to use these cards. So if you look at both the AMD documentation and the PyTorch documentation, they actually tell you to install that PyTorch now provide wheels built for Rockham. Um, and the both sets of documentation tell you to uh, run this install command. So what we will do is we'll first create a virtual environment. Uh, and we'll call it demo, um, and then we'll activate it. Oops. And having done that, I'm then going to update pip and set up tools because uh, the default ones on Enterprise Linux 9x are quite old, and set up tools particularly has some vulnerabilities in it. Um, Okay. Um, fine. Now we can run that command we had. So if we look at the command they tell you to run, uh, do, 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 oops, it's scrolled past. Let's bring that back. Um, you're doing a normal pip install of Torch, Torch Vision, and Torch Audio. The only difference is that you're using uh, an index URL that the PyTorch people have provided with builds for Rock of Six, right? So let's do that. One of the annoyances of being on a Mac is at some point something changed in my touchpad configuration. Um, and it means copy and paste is a real pain to use when you're using a trackpad. Um, and thanks to being allowed Office, because I don't have an office, uh, I've been doing this in a room, uh, the meeting room, so I don't have my trackball and stuff like that. Right? Easy. So these are quite big things to download. Unfortunately, uh, 
the PyTorch build for Rockham is, as we can see, about 2.3 gigabytes. Um, and for various reasons, the network connection that, that this test machine is not in is not particularly good. So we'll do a bit of a time skip here um, while this downloads. And we're back. Um, as you can see, it's downloaded the main PyTorch wheel. The other wheels are a lot smaller. Um, so it's going to pull out Torch Vision and some dependencies. Um, okay, so that's the base dependencies installed. And um, if I start Python 3, I'll show you how slightly weird this implementation is. Um, I was talking to someone on Twitter about this, and he claimed that the way this works is that they ran Hipify. So, um, HIP is a programming language, again, a bit like CUDA, uh, but general purpose. Um, part of the Rockham suite is a tool called Hipify, which converts CUDA code to HIP, HIPsicle code. Um, he claims they ran that on Torch, on the existing CUDA code, effectively, to generate this. And that's almost, that's quite believable, because actually, if you import Torch, um, it exposes these devices as CUDA devices. So although they're AMD GPUs, so if we do something like uh, torch.cuda.devicecount, uh, let's try to remember I read, yes, device count. You can see it thinks it's got eight CUDA devices. Um, and then if we look to see what those are, we could do something like torch.cuda.getDevices. Device, is it device name? There you go. Um, so it thinks it's got CUDA devices, um, and it thinks the CUDA devices are AMD Instinct MI300Xs. This is quite good because this actually means this even kind of goes beyond the compatibility you might have with other GPUs. So I do a lot of stuff on Metal on this Mac, um, and there you have to tell it explicitly to shuffle stuff to the uh, MPS device rather than a CUDA device. Here you can genuinely run the code unmodified. Uh, cuts. Right. Um, right. So Torch is working. Uh, we had a cut here because I made a mistake, basically. Torch is working, um, but we do need to install some other packages to make stuff work. I've put all the packages, so, so are my common packages for doing machine learning um, and some generative AI stuff in a requirements.txt. Uh, there's obviously diffusers and transformers, um, but also, um, and this is important, a thing called MedEnlist, and which is a very nice open data set of medical images I've been using for doing some benchmarking on the Linux one. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to install that. Um, it's also got JupyterLab because I might do a demo later on this of Stable Diffusion, which of course all works. Um, Thankfully, these are all cached. It's interesting to me that pip does not cache the alternative index. Anyway, right. So on the system, because I've been doing some benchmarking, there are repositories for um, machine learning workflows. So there's the one with the med, med MNIST. That's a bit of a mouthful for me. Um, and if we look at that, um, you'll see that I've got folders for GraphCore, because GraphCore has this thing called PopTorch, which is sort of an add-on for Torch. So if you want stuff to run on GraphCore, you have to write a bunch of extra code. Um, similarly, I've got a folder for Gaudi because we've had access to Intel Gaudi boxes and you need to add extra stuff into the training loop to get, perform to get them to work, basically. Um, but there's also a folder called General, and that's where the code that runs on CUDA and CPU lives. Um, and if we look at this, so we look at the ResNet 50 version, um, we'll see that there's really no special stuff in here to make it work on AMD, right? The stuff it does around sort of device detection, it checks see if CUDA is available, prints out some debugging, if it is, also turns on the tensor cores, which, which gives a bit extra performance. And if not, it just runs on the CPU, right? Um, so this is a completely generic script, runs on CPU, runs on NVIDIA. Um, anything else I should say in here? Uh, it does do a compile step, which means the first epoch 
is slower than the subsequent epochs. Um, we're not going to do a full training run because on this model it takes about half an hour. Um, so uh, we'll just get up to the point where it's training and then to prove you know to prove it's working. So let's do that. Uh, I've, uh, So as you can see, it's detected it's got a Cruiser device, that AMD Instinct MI300X, and so it's turned on the TensorFlow 2 features as well. Um, what it's doing now is looking at the copy of MedMNIST in my home directory to see if it's the checksums match. Um, it's to do this twice because it does it for the um, training set and for the test set. Um, if it doesn't have those, it would pull them from uh, Zotoro, I think, is where the data set's held. And again, that would be quite slow on this network, so I've, I've kind of pre-done it. I had a lot of fun um, making things work with this model because it has... So the training data... Sorry, not this model with this data set, because the data set's training data is not divisible by like lots of powers of two. And on GraphCore, uh, you really have to have an integer, you know, the batch size times the number of IPUs must be an integer divisor of the number of samples. Otherwise you get into a weird situation where there's like a leftover bit. It's the usual parallelization problem where you have a remainder. And because the way GraphCore works, it's, um, pulls out a whole chunk of, um, because it compiles the graph for a particular batch size, it can't then do the smaller batch size, so it drops a bunch of the training data, which is sort of annoying. I spent a lot of time trying to find ways around it, but in the end, I just had to accept that's going to be the case on the graph core system. So what it's doing now is it's doing the compile step, except I'll tell it to torch compile the full graph. Um, So here we go, it's going off training. Um, yeah, so it's, got, it's going. So we can leave it there and go to kill that. And then we can move on to uh, generative AI, which is of course the new hotness, quote unquote. Um, so let's do that. Uh, okay. Um, okay, also in this on the system, I've got, um, the directory of code where I've been messing around with large language models. Um, all of this is on GitHub, by the way. You can definitely download it and have a play. Um, yesterday or the day before, uh, Llama 3 came, 3 3.1 came out. And of course, that just works out the box on here because it works out of the box on CUDA. Um, so again, we can look at the script for Llama 3.1 I have in here. And again, like there's there's no specific to AMD code in here. Porch Torch says the Transformers libraries are really chatty in terms of warnings, and it just it makes a very ugly user experience. So I just disable a bunch of that. It's very a lot of the warnings are not useful warnings. Um, there is one. Uh, I think the PyTorch on here is not compiled with memory efficient attention, um, or memory efficient flash attention. Uh, that can be a problem for very large models, so it will take up more RAM on the card. But uh, there's a huge amount of RAM on an MI300X anyway, so it's not too much of a problem. Um, again, this is just at, assuming these are CUDA devices. Um, this chatbot is a sarcastic French chatbot because I have very few sources of joy in my life. No, because it's just entertaining. Um, so let's run this. Um, and again, I've downloaded the weights ahead of time because that really would be slow on here. Uh, three. So as you can see, it's detected eight CUDA devices. Uh, this is the 8 billion uh, parameter version of the model. I wanted to do the 405 billion parameter model because I saw there's a press release from AMD that you can definitely run that on an eight-way MI300X, but sadly the server does not have a lot of storage. Um, and the checkpoints for that, I downloaded another system where in the region of three quarters of a terabyte. And there's just not enough space for the checkpoints actually on the local storage on the machine. Um, uh,
So the first inference on this can be a little bit slow because again, it's staging stuff in this time it's staging stuff into memory. These models are quite large. Um, there we go. As you can see, it just works out the box, right? So that's Llama 3.1 happily running on that platform. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to break the video and uh, start up Jupyter Lab so I can show you some image rendering in Stable Diffusion, probably Stable Diffusion 3, but maybe Stable Diffusion XL as well. Um, so back in a tick. Right, um, so I've started up a Jupyter Lab instance, I had to do a port forward through SSH, there's all a bunch of plumbing, you can find videos about how to do this on my other, um, elsewhere on my channel, um, because this machine is inside Supermicro's data center, it's behind a VPN, there's a whole bunch of other stuff you can jump through. Um, so here we have Jupyter Lab, um, it's a very familiar interface, um, we're going to run my sort of wrapper for the Diffuser Stable Diffusion XL pipeline. Um, this doesn't know anything about uh, AMD GPUs. It will treat this like an NVIDIA GPU because it wraps Torch and diffusers. Um, you can see there's some entertaining legacy graph core stuff there um, because it doesn't work at the moment. Um, and I was trying to get this working for a long time on graph core and never got it to work because of the memory limitations. Um, I just could build proof this is really the same machine though. If we open the terminal, and uh, run Rockham SMI, you'll see you've got the eight GPUs. We've got, you can see that they're in my 300X. Okay. So let's import that. Uh, there's a routine in my, in my library called Reflective Generate, which is for exactly this purpose, which is showing off Stable Diffusion XL and GPUs. Um, see, it detects eight NVIDIA GPUs. And then if we run, uh, Um, was a cute at enjoying doing tea. Let's say lunch because I'm hungry and it's lunchtime. Uh, um, let's say, well, we've got eight GPUs, let's generate eight. Uh, that. And I see the slightly awkward uh, Jupyter console uh, coping with multiple uh, TDQM instances at the moment. Um, it sort of merges them into one in a hilariously awful way. Uh, hopefully we should get eight images out of this. Yeah. Let's see what it's done. Cat having lunch. The cat having lunch. The cat having lunch. So yeah, that's working fantastically well. No code modification, um, just doing inference on Stable Diffusion XL. So there you have it. It's pretty easy to get up and running on these AMD platforms. Um, we also have had access to some of the older cards through AMD. Uh, and it's similarly easy on the MI210 and MI250. Um, I want to thank Supermicro and BIOS IT again for access to this machine, which is the 8-way MI300 Xbox, and also an 8-way Intel Gaudi 2 machine we did some testing on. Um, it's been really interesting in evaluating those platforms, and it's going to be very helpful to us in sort of deciding technologies to pick in future. So thank you.